This tutorial is for brand new players of Civilization VI. I'm going to go through the tutorial, the game tutorial, and explain things along the way. So it makes it, hopefully it makes it easier for you. So here we have two civilizations to pick from. Uh, Egypt with Cleopatra or Samaria with Gilgamesh. It doesn't really matter. So we'll pick one. The starting screen will always provide you with the civilization and leader traits along with their unique units or buildings. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're not going to pay much attention to this because essentially you can win the game without really using any special abilities of these civs. They just definitely help. Consider like a bonus. All right, so we have the first advisor telling us. So let's get started. That does mean nothing. Okay, so this is a settler. This is your first unit that you, you receive. And the settler's only purpose is to settle a city. So now it is important. It is very important, actually, to turn the yields on. Right now, we can see there are some uh, resources right around, but we have no idea what this land yields are, like how much food and production it gives us. Um, and it's very important in founding the city. I actually have a separate video on how to settle cities or how to pick a settling location for a city. I highly recommend you check it out. But let's go ahead and found the city right here because this is a tutorial. Okay. The city is a cornerstone of any civilization. City size is represented by the population icon, which is right here. It's actually one. Each city also claims surrounding lands. So this is the first ring of the working tiles, right? So the city works one of these tiles immediately. So in order, you must choose how each city in your civilization is to grow and expand over time, improving the land and creating new buildings and districts. Yeah, we do have some resources. So each city generates a variety of yields. Okay, so now we can see the yields, right? Once you are once you click on the city, then you can see these yields, which are this corn shows or maize shows food, which is two food, and the gear or the cog shows production. The food is important for the population growth. Okay. And the production is important for building things in the city. So right now we have one citizen, right? And one citizen can work one hex within your borders. All right, growing your city's population is very important. It is actually very important. It's important to focus on food early and make sure that your citizens work food rich tiles so that the city grows. All right, so now it's showing you how to build things in the city. So that's this cog, right? Okay, so what this is a production chooser, production chooser, maybe production selector, I guess, because it says choose production here. From here, you can construct buildings, create wonders and train military units, right? So this is your main production uh, screen and it will show you everything that you can build. So the first thing you can build is probably a unit. Um, in this case, they want us to build a warrior. The warrior is the basic melee unit. So it takes some time to build it. Why does it take so long, right? That's a good question. So the number of game turns it will take is indicated on each item in the menu. 
uh, well, we didn't see it. Uh, how many turns does it take? Well, it takes five turns at five production, meaning that this warrior costs about uh, 25, maybe? 25 production. These gears are called production. So the higher the gears, the better. Okay. So we put it to production. We can see that it takes five turns to build, to grow to population two, meaning that this city will work um, two tiles instead of just one. And then after five turns, this city is going to produce a unit, a unit that we can move around the map. So the game really shows you what to do, right? Kind of prompts you what to do. So let's go to the next turn. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. So the technological advancement of your people is attained through research. Okay. So this is the tech tree, right? The technology tree and the technologies are important because they open up and unlock different things. New military units, city upgrades, and much more. Well, let's see how. So we select it, okay, and then you can see there are five turns for us to research it. So everything takes a little time, right? Just as building new units is fueled by production, researching new technology is fueled by science. And you can see it right here in the corner. Right now, we, our city is producing 2.8 science and it works the same way as production. So mining costs what, like uh, around 15, I guess, for science. And that's why it takes five turns. Each city in your empire generates a small amount of science per turn. How quickly your research projects are completed is determined by the total of science generated by your city. The more science you generate, the faster you research new technologies, as I just mentioned. So there are a couple of things, right? This is your total civilization's output of science. We'll find out about culture. We'll find out about faith and gold. And this, once you click on the city, this is a city screen and it shows you how much, how many, how much output for each of those mechanics, game mechanics, your city produces. So obviously these numbers match what your civilization produces because we only have one city. Let's end the turn. Oh, ho! barbarians are a nuisance and they can be very dangerous. Yeah, let's show, let's show them what's up. So for the purpose of this tutorial, we have rushed the production of this unit. Now the production will take more turns. So, you know, meaning that while you're building your units, you know, there is a little bit of time you have to build up your units and maybe even the building before the barbarians show up, but sometimes they show up very early. All right, so how do we fight the barbarians? Barbarians are always red and black. Their icon is always like red and black. So let's select it. So all we have to do, it's like chess, right? Or any board game, rather. Think of civilization as a board game. All you have to do, the unit is selected. All we have to do is right click and they will attack the barbarians and kill them. Now they want us to build something in the city. So before we do that, you can see that the health of this warrior is now yellow it used to be green which was full health by the way three turns left for the city to grow to population two so now we need to rest the warrior so lose a turn or even two to gain the health back you really don't want to attack other units when your health is low all right so let's choose the production let's see what we can build in the city again this this area the right corner, right bottom corner, will always prompt you to do things. So 
So let's build some workforce. So what does that mean? So your units at the top here, you have districts and buildings, right? So the buildings you can build at the bottom, you have units. So there are two sections right now. You have civilian units like settlers, builders, settlers, obviously, they create new cities and you want to expand, right? You want to create at least like six, eight, ten cities is beautiful on the standard map. And you want to create them relatively quickly. So once you get to 10 cities, for example, then you can um, build up your empire and you know develop science and, and set yourself up to reach a certain type of victory that you're going to decide on. Depends on the game conditions. So settlers are super important. And the cost of settlers grows progressively with every city you found. So if the first one only took like, you know, 11 turns to build because it's only cost 53 production, as you can see on this tool tip, well, the next one will take, you know, 15 turns to build and will cost 70 production. I don't remember exactly how it scales, but it does. And the whole idea is that your city grows, right? And the production grows in the city. So technically, your settlers are not more expensive in that sense. They're proportionally expensive, ex uh, more expensive to your production growth. Now, this unit builder, it can create tile improvements. See how we have tiles around the city, right? We have coffee or, and stone. These are resources. Then we have woods over here. This is a river. These are mountains. So <laughs> it's important to learn the landscape because you can do different things with it. Builders can do different things to the landscape to improve production, for example, or earn gold, etc. So let's go. Let's build a builder. They improve our civilization. Okay. Builder has been added to the queue and will take several turns to complete. There are no remaining decisions. This button again showing next turn. Now, you don't have to click it right away. You can still click around and see how things are. Unfortunately, I was hoping the tutorial will allow us to click into the city, but I guess we can't really do anything and no other options are available. All right, so it will take how many turns? Seven turns to complete the builder. We must not grow the lands beyond them. Okay, so let's understand the world. The beginning of the game, your city and the lands immediately around are revealed right here, right? But the rest of it, look, it's all like foggy. Well, this little map is showing you like a more strategic map. This main view shows you immediate like large tactical map, I guess. Right, so the areas beyond the represented by this blank parchment or the fog, unexplored area. Like this, this is a fog, right? So you can see there are woods there, but they're kind of grayed out. That's a fog of war, let's say. But this parchment blocks everything. You can't see anything. So exploration is so important. Can't stress enough. I have another video. <laughs> that I will um, post in the description for you to check out on the benefits of exploration. Oh, here we go. We can use the warrior to explore. You use units to explore the area around. So let's move this guy around. So he has a movement range of two. It's right here. This is the unit screen or tool tip maybe. So you can see the strength of the warrior is 20. The movement is two. This blue border indicates where the warrior can go. Now you can definitely, you, you want to move further away, right? From the city towards the parchment area. Open terrain like plains and grass land okay well they didn't even tell us what the plains and grassland tiles are so the yellow ones or let's call them lime green or light green tiles are plains whereas the dark green tiles 
and flat you can see them they're flat these are grasslands now these bumps are hills so hills will require an extra unit of movement so these woods also require an extra unit of movement that's why you can't go you can't move two tiles right this warrior has a movement of two but you can't move there because woods take up that unit of movement as you can see you can move it once so you're going to spend two units of movement going through this type of terrain mountains you can't even cross forget it until you discover tunnels all right so they want us to move into this spot right click all right discovering and exploring early is super important because you come across these tribal villages and they can give your civilization instant benefits so additional population or gold but there are a bunch of things there's a whole list of things that you can get from the tribal villages and you want to get to them as soon as possible because ai or computer player will also send its units to explore and might get to those villages faster than you so you want to go as soon as you can Okay, let's make context since your warrior unit has used all of its movement points it is done with its action in this turn production and research tasks is still in progress so there is nothing else to do but we know what we're going to do next turn right we're going to walk into this village with a warrior okay to explore the way move your warrior move your unit into the tribal village hex or tile right click ah see so it wasn't gold and it wasn't population they actually provided us with a unit the tribal village will grant us a reward when explored by a player this tribal village has granted you a new scout unit which has appeared in the city let's put them to to the good use notice that the scout unit has a movement of let's look at the screen here three however his strength is only 10 right how much weaker half the strength of the warrior the whole point of the scout is to scout the land but poor warriors right so we can see their melee strength their combat strength is very low so where are we gonna go oh so the game wants us to go anywhere so because they have a movement of three we can actually walk all the way to the hill and it's a good idea to walk onto hills because hills will explore more land and it's also a good idea if you're exploring you know east with one unit you want to go west the opposite direction with a different unit you certainly don't want to you know walk the same path because you want to explore as much of your surroundings as you can and you i want to stress about the surroundings because there could be things immediately around your city like the tribal villages or barbarians that you want to fight immediately so let's uh and i i would suggest especially in the beginning go one move at a time like this oh yeah well because we walked i should have walked on this hill but that's okay but you can see that we can see two tiles beyond right Units can be ordered to move longer distances by giving them a multi-turn order. See, this is something that I don't like because the game is not really good at this, okay? Um, you can see that we can go all the way here and we'll take two turns. That's the order. So they want us to return to, to have the warrior come back to the city. 
So the warrior made one move and then the next turn automatically will make another move into the city. All right. Oh, so as you can see, the population of the face has grown from one to two. All right. You can see that to grow to three, it will take seven turns. We have three turns to go with the builder still. As long as the city is well fed and its people are happy, it will continue to grow. The citizens of the city work the surrounding plots and improvements contributing to greater yield. Higher population contribute to faster science research, faster city production and faster cultural growth. Okay, so science, now they mention culture. It's right here. Culture is important. I'm sure we're going to be goals okay for defense move warriors back to the city not the best idea actually the warrior will have a stronger defense bonus when they're in the city but you want to station them out and see who's coming at you it's always a good strategy to not only found new cities to expand your realm but also to grow those cities of course all right so now we can move with the Scout. Okay, no further matters. Well, we've got the coast. When you reach the coast, that means you can't really go on the water yet until you research specific technology. On the real in the real game, right? You you, you can hover over and we'll tell you what kind of tile it is. Uh, right now, it only highlights resources. Anyway, for the scout to actually go in the water, we need like sailing or something like that. Right now you can't get there. So it's a good idea to explore around the coast and maybe go around, around and explore all this area just like this. It's a good idea. So early in the game, you can still use your warrior as an, as a, as, as an explorer. So instead of running it back to the city, I would have actually explored this area. Um, to the to the east of the city. Ah, so the research finished. You can see it says mining just completed. Okay. Your civilization will always be researching the technology because you just completed mining. You must now choose what to research next before you can progress to the next turn. And that's how it works. Okay, so again, the game is prompting us to choose a research. In this case, they're not allowing me to click on this open technology tree that would show you all of the technologies that you could research. Right now, we just have to make a choice right here. And you want to go with basic technologies first. So the cheapest ones, right? Because each one of them gives basic buildings and basic abilities for the uh, builder units on how to improve the land. So we'll go with pottery. Okay, mines and quarries. All right, let's keep going. Research has begun pottery, and you turn once you move the scout. All right, again, as you can see, we only have so much move to make. Okay. Perhaps they should fortify their position. They can fortify their position. When not advancing a military unit, it is often a good idea to fortify the unit. You should always fortify the unit. That's true. When ordered to fortify, the unit will spend up to two turns digging in. And this will increase their combat strength if they're attacked. And there is a number by how much it's increased. Um, I want to say... So you always want to fortify your units when you're not moving them. Okay. Good for us. This unit will now have an advantage in combat when defending. That's right. However, if the unit is moved, it will lose its fortified status. It will have to be ordered to fortify again, again, for the next two turns again, right? 
So obviously continue to explore. Uh, I want to move that way. Okay. Not backwards. So even though we do have one movement point left, there is no point of using it. So we'll just go to next turn. And now with three movement points, we can still traverse the hills. Hmm. There's more fish here, but there's nothing else we have discovered yet. Okay, so we've got a builder. Builders can construct a wide variety of improvements to our land. The type of improvement they can build on a plot is often determined by the type of terrain. Plains and grassland plots are ideal for farms which will help increase population. And they will. All you have to do is move over. And you, you, initially, you can only build farms on flat tiles. Okay. So in this case, and you can't build farms on woods yet. You have to chop them first, which we'll, I'm sure we'll review later. So let's move as the game tells us to do. Okay. And here are the actions for the builder. There are a bunch of them. They can remove features, chopping woods, for example. They can build mines because we have minor mi mining discovered. They can also build quarries, which you can see it's the same symbol, right? Here's the farm, same symbol. So the map shows you what the builder can do. And we'll produce more food. In this case, we improved one food, one production, which is a horrible tile anyway, yields wise. Best tiles start with two food and two production. So like, for example, this one is great. And this one is great. Your city would work, if it's two population, you would want it to work this tile and this tile, not the farm, because the farm has less yield. It's only three yields. So it tells us that now we increased, you know, from one, one to two food, one production, which is great. I mean, I'm not sure how much our population will grow because of that. But every farm also provides housing. Builders can build up to three improvements before exhausting their workforce. And you can see the builds number right here. So it starts with three. We just used one to build a farm. So we only have two. Um, there you go. Unit panel, this builder has consumed one and now has two. All right, let's see what we can build in the city. In addition to training units, your city can focus its production on constructing buildings like the monument. Try building one now by selecting in the production queue. Again, you go into the city, click the gear, and the only building that we can build is a monument. And when you hover over, you can see that the cost of it is 40. Okay, and it will take us five turns to complete. And what does the monument do? It provides plus two culture. So I'm sure we'll, they'll explain it right now. Okay. Continue to explore. Okay. And you can see by hovering over the city tile that it will take five turns to complete. All right. So here is an interesting choice. Uh, we can either go up north here but you can see that it's a peninsula right so you you kind of going to waste your scout exploration abilities by going there where if we move south there's plenty of land to discover so i might leave this piece of land here unexplored also as you can see this is the end of the map by the way that's the north so there's nothing beyond it so there isn't much land here anyway I mean, it could go round and round or whatever and connect, but logically, there's nothing here. There's way more land down south. So let's traverse the river. Now that our people are fed, let us turn our gaze as a sea from ocean. 
Okay, so now let's see what they are going to suggest in, in the sense of resources. Scattered around the map are resources of various kinds. There are three categories of resources. Luxury, these contribute to the overall happiness of your citizens, very important. Strategic, essential for creating some very powerful military units. And bonus, provide additional yields of food, production, or gold. Okay, this stone is a bonus resource. It provides an additional production to your city. If you build a quarry improvement here, it will raise the yield to two production. Okay, so I guess we have we can build the quarry with the mining. Let's go. This stone is a bonus resource. It provides additional production in your city. So let's build a... See, it says plus one production. The farm said plus one food. Oh, there is plus 0 0.5 housing. And this one will provide more production. However, this tile was like one food, right? Two production now or three production. Is it a good tile as opposed to two food, two production, two food, two production? Because if it's only one food, then your city will go slower. But it's a grassland tile, so it should be two food. Again, you should turn the map option. Okay, now I can click on map options. So this yield icon checkbox is super important. You can uncheck resources and now you can't even see them on the icons on the map. You should always have them on, especially in the beginning, especially when you are learning the game. And you want to turn the yield icons on too, so that you know exactly can't manage citizens. We don't know what what tiles they are working. It's grayed out. Um, but you can see other tiles around, right? And how much yield. Okay, so the quarry, the stone rather, is providing 2-2. Two, two. Right now, 2 food, 2 production. So we improved the farm, which is useless still. We improved the quarry, and it's only as good as these unimproved tiles so what was that about why why do you even need to do it right in this case of course the game is teaching us how to do it but in real game you wouldn't do it right away let's keep moving okay so we only have one movement well in this case i can actually go down and it reveal more tiles around Oh, we got a tech boost. They haven't even talked about that. So by doing different things, right? Building buildings, improving the land, you will be able to boost your technology research as well as civ civics research. So, but I'm sure the game will talk about it later. Okay, so they just want to expand all the build charges that the builder has. If it has one of the forks remaining, you can use it to build either a mine on the hill, which is great, or a farm on the plains. Okay, this may take one more than one turn, one to move the builder and one to build the improvement. Now, you don't want... Remember, builders can only construct improvements within the borders of the city. By changing culture, the borders will expand, allowing you access to more resources. Feel free to continue. Okay. So right now, we started with one, two, three, four, five, six tiles. Okay. Right now, you can see this is a tile number seven, and it's in the second ring of tiles that the city will work. As the city grows and the borders expand, they can expand all the way to the third ring of tiles, okay? So the city can work as far as one, two, three. But in order to get there, your borders have to expand or you can buy tiles, which I'm sure, I'm not sure if we're gonna get to here. So they want us to build another farm. I really wouldn't waste a charge until we can build 
improve this coffee resource, but it requires irrigation technology to be researched. You don't have to waste your builder charges right away. You can save it, save it until you research something. Okay. You definitely don't want to leave your builder out though, hanging out because if the barbarians or the computer player comes with his units, they just steal it. They basically take it captive and make their builder. They turn it into their builder, if that makes sense. And you lose it basically forever until you, unless you can actually get it back, which is possible anyway. So if you're not using the builder, you would move it into the city for protection. They wouldn't be able to get to it. So keep worries inside the city. What are our goals and build improvement? Use your builder to construct a third improvement. Okay. So we have to waste it. So we have, we have an option to build a farm here or a farm here. You can see this gray icons actually showing you the actions that the builder or the builds that the builder can do. So, uh, it's a good idea and you should get used to the idea of building adjacent farms next to each other, because as you progress through the tech tree, there will be a benefit to it. The food yields will increase because they're together. Think of them as collective farms, if you will. So because of that, I will go and improve this tile, even though I lose a turn, but that's okay. Because my city does not need that many tile to, tiles to work. I, I only have population of two. It's going to be a population of three, meaning that I will work three tiles, but I already have one, two, three, four tiles that the city can work. And now I'm going to have a fifth one. They're going to be useless because the city doesn't have enough population to work all of them. Okay. So it looks like, it looks like we were on a, you know, island, I guess, or continent, but usually it depends on what kind of map you take. The standard map is continents, meaning that you probably have um, two or three sieves, depending on the size of the map on the same continent. And then there is another continent. Usually there are two of them with another three sieves computer sieves in addition to food your people also require amenities in your in their cities one source of amenities are luxury resources such as coffee next to the capital right there with the pottery technology complete it will be a good idea to research irrigation right remember when we hovered over the coffee it said requires irrigation it will enable the builders to improve it Okay. This will provide amenities to our city. So basically, Hey, we now have coffee as a, as a product and people are happy, which is awesome because as the city grows, they're going to need amenities. So let's choose research and let's choose irrigation. So why does, where does it say that it can improve. Okay. So unlocks improvement plantation, as you can see at the bottom and plantation is necessary for coffee. That will be the improvement, just like the quarry for the stone, just like the farm for the plain uh, tiles land plantation would be the improvement that the builder would be able to build on the coffee tile. So let's select it. Here you go. Tool tips. Keep reading. I mean, it's all about reading. There's so much in this game that you need to know about. It's daunting, but the more you play, the more you understand, obviously. You might have noticed that your builder unit disappeared. Oh no, he died. No, he didn't die because he used its last build charge, right? So he had three charges and we have one farm, one quarry and another farm making the three improvements. So he expanded the three charges. He's gone. This is because of all this workforce has been expended. You will need to train more builders as you progress through the game to improve the lands around your city. So that's a never ending story, basically. Oh, we boosted craftsmanship. Again, no explanation for that, right? 
Not yet. Okay, so I can step on this hill and lose a turn, but it looks like it's co it's a coast. It looks like the water is hugging the coast like this because you can see the edge of this tile is light, just like the beach. So I'm not going to go that way. I'm just going to keep walking down the coast like this. Oh, and we find, and you can see that I was right. You can see that it's all water and these rocks, they show that it's also coast and um, rocky coast. And rocky coast called cliffs. Just a different type of terrain. All right. Um, you can see that we can have, we can move one more uh, tile down south here. And uh, we're still going to be next to the village because it's going to take all three movement points to move into this village because it's in the jungle or in the woods. So I can move down and I see that the coastline probably runs just like this. So we're just going to go back east and south of the city this way to explore with the scout continue. But we want to get into this village right, right into the next turn because we want to see what kind of benefit it has for us. Okay. By accumulating culture, you have just unlocked Code of law Laws, which contains your first government chiefdom. All right, guys, uh, this wraps up uh, the first episode of the in-game tutorial walkthrough. I hope this um, helped you a little bit with, with some details and explanations along the way as the game progresses. Please like, subscribe the video so you can uh, receive an alert when the next episode comes out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.